Hello everyone, welcome to this video about the gout, also known as arthritis urica. In this video we're going to talk about the definition, etiology, symptoms, diagnosis and the treatment of the disease. Gout or arthritis urica is a disease of the joint called arthropathy. Classically, gout starts off by affecting one big toe and it later spreads on to affect other joints. The picture on the right shows the most commonly affected joints, but remember, gout can start in any joint and it can affect more joints at the same time in the beginning as well. This disease occurs due to accumulation of uric acid crystals in the joints. These crystals causes inflammation, which leads to very painful and swollen joints. Over time, these crystals and the inflammation leads to erosion of the joints and the erosion can end up completely obliterating the joints. As said before, the disease comes due to accumulation of uric acid crystals in the joint. Uh, hyperuricemia, which means elevated uric acid levels in the blood, is very commonly seen in those with gout. However, it is very important to remember that elevated uric acid is not a requirement to develop gout. It can develop with normal serum levels as well, but usually hyperuricemia is seen. As uric acid is a degradation project resulting from degradation of purines, namely adenine and guanine, plus a few others, there are two main factors that can lead to hyperuricemia. The most common cause of hyperuricemia is decreased excretion of uric acid. This accounts for about 4 out of 5 cases, and the underlying reasons for, for this is mainly a condition in the kidney. It can either be by directly renal insufficiency, or a side effect from medications that act on the kidney, like loop diuretics, thiazide diuretics, aspirin, or ibuprofen. The second group, causing about 1 out of 5 cases, is increased production of uric acid. Now, there are many reasons for increased production, but the two most important reasons that I want you to remember is that it can be due to different cancers and from increased consumption of purines. Other causes like enzyme defects are, can also be the case, but they are more rare. Now to symptoms. The first symptom of gout is a hyperacute onset arthritis that affects one joint. Classically, this is is seen in one of the big toes, and this is called podagra. The joint will be swollen, red, warm, very painful, and it will have decreased range of motion. Over time, as gout progresses to a more chronic stage, there will be more and more destruction of the joint and formation of tophi. Tophi are classically seen symptoms that are associated with gout. They are hard, painless nodules that forms around the joint, and they can vary a lot in how they look and their size. This is a great example on how tophi can look uh, when they form on the joint of the finger. Of the same finger, you can see how the tophi look like on an x-ray, together with the destruction of the joint and bone around the joint, and lastly, how the tophi looks like when you open up the skin. Note, tophi can be mistaken for Herberden's noduli, a classically seen symptom in rheumatoid arthritis, so remember to test for your differential diagnosis before concluding with the disease. Other differential diagnoses to keep in mind are septic arthritis and pseudogout. Both will be explained in other videos. In these pictures, the picture on the right here will be the one with gout, here you have tophi, and here, for instance, you have Herberden's noduli. Very hard to see the difference sometimes, like here it can be quite clear, but sometimes it can be very hard to see the difference. We can divide the symptomatology of gout into four phases. The phases are as following. In the first phase of the disease, there are no symptoms. Uric acid will start building up in the joints, and in most cases there will be hyperuricemia. However, it is important to remember that hyperuricemia is not necessary for uric acid crystals to build up. In the second phase of the disease, in the second phase of the disease, the first attack of arthritis occurs. This is classically a case of monoarthritis, which attacks one big toe, which is again called podagra. The joint will be warm, red, painful, and swollen, and the patient will typically be woken up at night due to the pain. The very first attack will be hyperacute, that means that it has an extremely fast onset, while later ones will be less acute, they will be still be quite fast, but not as fast as the first one. Phase 3 consists of periods of no symptoms, with some uh, periods of acute arthritis occurring now and then. 
in phase four, the disease has now progressed to chronic gout. There will be involvement of many joints. In the fourth phase, the classically seen tophi starts to form. As said earlier, these are painless, hard nodules that forms on the joints. Now to diagnosis. The first test to know is arthrocentesis, which is aspiration from the joint. The classically findings that is seen in gout is accumulation of uric acid crystals in the synovial fluid. These crystals are distinctly needle-shaped. There will also be some accumulation of leukocytes. A count over 2000 per microliter, where at least 50% are neutrophils, is a good indicator for gout. If the count is much higher, it can be an indication that there is another cause of arthritis, like septic arthritis, which is the most uh, important one that we're very scared about. Blood tests are also quite useful in gout in two cases. First, uric acid can be tested and can be an indicator for possible gout. But remember, it doesn't have to be uh, hyperuricemia for gout to occur. Infectious markers and blood culture should also be taken for differential diagnosis. Again, we're most scared about septic arthritis. Lastly, in the later stages of gout, x-rays can show destructions of the joints. Uh, now to treatment. First, in the first acute attacks, the treatment should be based on symptoms. Rest is always recommended, together with NSAIDs like ibuprofen. If NSAIDs and rest is not sufficient, glucocorticoids or colchicine is given. Colchicine has an effect that it inhibits migration and activation of neutrophils, and it also inhibits the phagocytosis, effectively slowing down the infection. Glucocorticoids is a last resort treatment given either orally or in extremely severe cases, it can be given intraarticularly. Remember, the last two are given if NSAIDs and rest is not sufficient. For chronic gout and also in phase three of the disease, additional treatment should be given. First, lifestyle changes with alcohol and purine restriction is advised, even though only a few patients actually complies with this. Secondly, medications to reduce the amount of uric acid should be given. The one that is a must know is allopurinol. Allopurinol inhibits the synthesis of uric acid and is a first line treatment of chronic gout. A second line treatment, which is given in addition to allopurinol if it's not effective enough, is probenicid. Probenicid inhibits resorption of uric acid in the kidneys, effectively increasing the renal clearance. Medications like allopurinol should never be started during an acute gout attack. They should be started up in asymptomatic phases of the disease. But after you start up the, the, the medication, you should never stop it. It is known that allopurinol and uh, these other drugs can cause an increased amount of attacks the period after it is started up. But when these attacks occur after you start it up, remember, don't stop the treatment. The medication should also be readjusted in cases of kidney disease. I hope you have enjoyed the video and I hope it has been educational. If you have any questions, feel free to post them below. Cheers!